things can go really easily out of hands because you don't know when your intuition changes to an addiction. I remember at one point I was going out like two weeks straight every night. And then sometimes in the morning I would drink a beer to get sober and then I would go to class. We danced really physically. It wasn't just like, you know, this like, uh, like we had like moves, you know, legs and shoulders. This. That I was like eating chocolate. And uh, McDonald's. McDonald's. Big tasty. I remember drinking like Pepsi quite often or something like that. <laughs> like Snickers or something, you know. When I was young, I realized that it's fun to eat, so <laughs> I just ate a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially after, let's say, 2017, we even stopped drinking. We stopped almost everything. Like our lives completely like switched around. Because if you use pornography, then you always artificially like stimulate yourself. And you think, you know, you're always like this, you know, gotta go, you want women and you want... Like most men will never even realize that they have these kind of cycles also. You think all of your life that you are in control, you know what you're doing. But then mm. once you stop and you cannot stop. I was like, when it comes, I'm like, I cover it. I don't want to see it. Like, no, thank you. I don't want to get any of that stimulus into my life. Like the hyper optimization is one of the worst things yeah. you can do for yourself. If you take something every day, trying to optimize everything, then you are most likely hyper optimizing and that becomes a problem. It felt like before that it was just a dream. It wasn't even me completely who was doing, doing the thing. Only after I started to get rid of these addictions, I started to actually feel like now I'm actually living my life. That's the biggest issue. You, you want to not bear things. You want to ease everything, you know, even the like smallest sufferings. This is not easy thing. Like this is one of the hardest things you can do. And actually this has been the hardest thing I've ever done. The unknown past of the Wafa Bros. So I think we've talked so much, you know, about our trials and tribulations and transformations, regards to the training, you know, and you, you know that we've gone through like a big, big changes and uh, through our training journey. But there's something that we've, you know, less discussed topic is our lifestyle, because it, same way as we have made this uh, or experience enlightenment and big transformation in regards to training, the same has happened in our lifestyle as well. And, you know, we, like you might consider maybe that, you know, we're stable and we're always being like healthy and uh, like, or, or been promoting healthy ways, but there's been a lot of variety there. And like me and Samoli, for example, and we, we met in university studying geography. I think that's already a new thing for, for many people. Like we haven't really talked about this. And during these times, you know, the, with the university life and student life, it was quite different. And there was, uh, for example, a lot of also drinking, a lot of partying. And this was something for, for me specifically, for example, this time, because when, when I was in the junior high school, or it was junior high school, yeah, I think, uh, during this time, I was like quite shy person and I kind of avoided big crowds. I, I avoided going to like meetings and parties. I was like no alcohol, nothing. And going to the university where I met Samuli and I also made other good friends there. Kind of like I sort of, I guess, uh, freed up a little bit. But with that and the socializing came also all the, dr the drinking and partying and going to the clubs in massive proportions. <laughs> yeah. Like I was maybe not the same, but before 18 years old, I didn't get drunk, not once. I didn't use any drugs. I didn't smoke. I didn't do any of that. But after like between 18 and 19, both of us were in the military. Mm. But after that, we started our university life and then everything started like uh, experimenting with stuff and, uh, yeah, and yeah. lots of alcohol and partying and all this stuff, like going to the nightclubs and and especially when I went to China as an exchange student to study Chinese, I would study like four hours of Chinese during the day. And then every evening I would go to party and clubs. Like I remember at one point I was going out like two weeks straight every night. <laughs> and then sometimes in the morning I would drink a beer to get sober and then I would go to class. <laughs> so like almost like alcoholic life. But it was like a, for a short period of time, like mm. half of the time I was very good. But but I wasn't even unique, like everyone was doing it. Like if you, if you have been like an exchange student in a in a foreign country, you know, like these guys, they just party 
they barely study. I would study, of course, but and I learned Chinese, but it was mostly just parting. And for me and Eero, we did this a lot in the university in our early twenties, but it still continued when we even when we started Fafa Fitness, mm. like when we were our, our like uh, 23, 24, 25 years old, we would still party and go to clubs, maybe sometimes two times per week, but usually one time. Yeah, yeah, maybe not as often as in the universities. I, I can't really say, it, but but still like regularly. Uh, but the funny thing that you mentioned, you know, about this like you drinking like every day for a week or two or something. This is something I don't know. Maybe I had some internal breaks, but I remember just one proper drinking time, and I felt so horrible that I oh I could I could never understand the people who could drink multiple days in a row. I was like one night, <laughs> and that's it. I just I like I feel like. I don't want at all to have anymore. Yeah, I was like this as well. But when you are in China, it somehow it changes. Things change. Yeah, 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 and they yeah. don't even have because they give you free alcohol, so you don't even have to spend money. Yeah. In, if you're like a white Westerner, foreigner, in a like a in small Chinese club, they just give you everything for free. And, and your friends there, they I, I assume that they also did. This. Yeah, everyone so, did. Because it, I think so. yeah, in Finland maybe the students like maybe the. Yeah, like if if everyone around me was doing it in Finland, maybe I would have also like okay, I just get it and drink more. But usually you have the party, and then it's maybe a week or two, and then you have another one. So yeah, and <laughs> I remember at this time we also tried some psychedelics and mm. yeah, that's a, yeah, know. and it was like actually I would say it's a, it was like a good thing, but for the last almost maybe ten years we haven't done like any, like we like especially after. Let's say 2017, like seven years ago, we even stopped drinking. We stopped mm. stopped getting drunk. We stopped almost everything. Like our lives completely like switched like a like a round. Yeah, what happened there actually? Because I remember like I took a lot of a lot of inspiration from you regards to the like stopping drinking and even caffeine. Like I think yeah, you it, had a revelation, like a bigger. Yeah, it was in Malaysia. Yeah, because we used to guess it. Of course, when we were young, we would always like uh, go for the girls as well. Like, <laughs> as a, uh, if you're single and uh, like a young man, this is what you do. Yeah, that's, so, that's so interesting. And I remember we got some girls in Malaysia as well, and I was then like, just after one night, I was like, like, what the hell I'm doing? Like, it was like because you you get drunk and then you do whatever, and it was like it's just completely because it felt like you don't have actual control over your life and over mm. yourself especially when you if you drink, like first you drink coffee and then you're like a little jittery and then then you then you drink one drink of alcohol then you drink another and then you just suddenly lose control and it's just it's just you know something just clicked and after that i was thinking okay now i need to get rid of mm. this and then i need to get rid of all of these different addictions but that was a massive change like in enormous i think you know taking yeah. away because it was at the same time i think it was nearly at the same time that we dropped alcohol and caffeine like two big drugs and okay. pornography as well yeah, and pornography so like three three things kind of left in the past but yeah that's i, I don't know you start to see life quite differently when you when you're not sort of uh, dependent on on the things because we, with coffee you know i think we talk about it a little bit but for me, it took quite a few months to feel even normal. And during the time, I always felt like I was yearning something. I think that was one of the things that actually bothered me, that I noticed that every every night I go to sleep, you know, I'm thinking about the next morning, oh, I'm going to get that cup, cup of coffee. Like that's kind <laughs> yeah, of yeah, the yeah, level it goes. Yeah. And you wake up because, because you want to have that. And it doesn't seem right. I don't think that should be the first thing you know that i think about in the morning uh, it, like it's something that that uh, i don't know enables everything else and makes me happy and makes me appreciate it just yeah that doesn't feel right <laughs> yeah and after that actually it felt like my life only started to like st it's actually started after that mm. when i got rid of all of these things like it felt like before that it was just a dream like it was just it wasn't even me completely who was doing mm. doing the thing only after i started to get rid of these addictions these things almost everyone does 
I started to actually feel like now I'm actually living my life and and our lives has gotten better every month, every year since. So it has been one of the best things that ever happened to us. Yeah. Uh, I'd say like, for example, uh, I think the stopping the pornography, for example, I think that was the first time that I started to even no- notice like the, the sort of hormonal changes in my own body. That, that was very weird, like experience. And through that, like understanding that there are, you know, moments where, for example, it, because if you use pornography, then you always artificial like stimulate yourself. And you think, you know, you're always like this, you know, got to go, you want women and you want to have sex or something. But that's not even the case. Like most men will never even realize that they have these kind of cycles also. Like they sometimes want more, sometimes more calm because you're artificially doing this. And I think that understanding this and also gaining a huge amount of power through that because when you have that energy and you don't spend it on something, it starts to like, you feel different in your body. You di- well, you feel also different in regards to confidence as well. But that was a big thing also that I think start to you know, build up the more the character, build up the confidence even more. And you start to be, again, just more, I guess, knowledgeable about your body and what it, what it even needs and how it, how it works. Yeah, actually, after this, after that moment, like uh, 2017 Malaysia, it was the moment when I really started to build like real self-esteem, mm-hmm. like real self-confidence that wasn't tied to anything. It was just core confidence. But, and what was... The craziest thing about the whole thing was that when you start to get rid of those addictions, like when you have these addictions, you don't even know you have these addictions. Because you think you are in control and you are like, of course I want to drink coffee. Of course I want <laughs> to watch some adult entertainment. Of course I want to do this. But once you put stop to, to, to all of it, it becomes clear that you don't even have control. Because, it, because you want to get rid of this completely and you yeah. still relapse. Like you cannot even stop when you want to stop. So that was like the one of the most humbling experiences of my life because you think all of your life that you are in control, you know what you're doing. But then mm. once you stop and you cannot stop, of course mm. you could stop maybe 50% first, then 75 and gradually you would like get rid of it, get rid of it completely. Yeah. But like still I would like relapse many, many times before it was like 100% like disappeared completely. Mm, this is like a big journey, you know, getting rid of the addictions. And I felt like, I don't know, in a way, like I said, it took it took a lot of time to feel normal, at least maybe the, I think the caffeine was the strongest because alcohol was kind of like, it was, there was a certain social thing to social attachment, but it wasn't like a physical attachment. So caffeine was like a very big physical attachment. Um, the the alcohol, yeah, it was the social and I don't know, pornography. It was relatively easy to get rid of that actually to an extent. I don't know when, what, what was the attachment there, but I guess you, when you change your values and you start to really maybe open your eyes and think about what you're doing, you know, but but people have different experiences with this. Yeah, it really depends on the person. Like yeah. for some people, pornography can be almost impossible yeah, yeah, to get rid of. Yeah, super hard. Like yeah. because there's like on Reddit and on online forums, there's these NoFap communities, and people try to stop every day. Like they try to stop uh-huh. and they cannot stop. Like there are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of men who try to stop with almost any means necessary, and most people cannot stop. They like, just cannot <laughs> stop. And the same actually with coffee, like there's decaf communities. Yeah. And there are many people stop, but they relapse over and over again. They just cannot, like, I have to get the chocolate. I Not have even to get, one day, so almost like. Yeah, the, many people can stop for maybe three days, but they can <laughs> never stop forever. So uh-huh. like, and and because of this whole thing, I really studied like addictions and all this, like how to get rid of this stuff, mm. like the what's the the most popular program for the AA, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah, yeah. Like I studied that as well. Oh. Like I studied, like read many books, even the, from the uh, Russell Brand. He had like a very book, very good book about yeah. the AA, how to get rid of addictions, how to get rid of drug addictions. And all addictions are actually the same. And they usually take from six to 12 months mm. or sometimes 24 months. Like it can take from six months to two years to get rid of like, whether it's like nicotine or caffeine or 
pornography or or the hard drugs mm. like heroin. Like some drugs are a, a lot harder to get rid of, like the antidepressants. They can like if you get if you stop, you can die. Like even like the Jordan Peterson, he went to yeah. coma <laughs> for weeks because he tried to stop this drug. So this is not easy thing. Like this is one of the hardest things you can do. And actually this has been the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm. Just gaining like complete control over myself and getting getting rid of these external influences that somehow because of my own will and because of my own ignorance mm. that somehow got like a hold of me and like which felt like actual chains that I almost couldn't get rid of. And there were other things as well. It wasn't, you know, even just uh, this alcohol or coffee, but even regards to food, I think I had like, or we had some some problems because, you know, just like not being able to control what you eat and how much you eat, that was a, that was actually a big thing. And and it had some, or was partially, partially related to also that we, uh, you know, we were living in different countries, multiple different countries, like this was our life in a way. And for example, in Croatia, like they have this amazing like mixed meat portions. You have like all kinds of different uh, whole meats and minced meat. Like is it what yeah, like sevapsis, yeah, sevapsis, guy mark, and like and it it was so good. Like you just it kind of encourages you to eat. And I remember not just that. I was like eating chocolate. Uh, I was eating. I got the piece I ate even from just the store. And McDonald's. McDonald's. Big tasty from McDonald's. And even this is like painful to say, it, but even I I I I remember drinking like Pepsi quite often or something like that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's that's like, horrible. Yeah, hor- horrible. Like Snickers or something. You know. And you might be wondering, you know, I I kind of still, I, well, not just kind of, I stayed in shape, but. But it was clearly like overeating and indulging in a way that wasn't really, really very and, healthy. And also, we were young enough to get get aware with it somehow. Yeah. Like when you get all older, you cannot have these habits <laughs> and be in shape or look good. <laughs> yeah, the, the actually, it was like um, let's say, how do you say, like taking advantage of the youth, where you know the metabolism is the, probably the highest, and we were training, of course, a lot. And like, super active. Yeah, super active. So and going to the clubs and dancing mm. like crazy. That's another. Which is thing. actually very good uh, movement and mobility training when you're like <laughs> dancing like this. And then, man, we we danced like really physically. It wasn't just like you know this like uh, you see people like mm, little this way. It was like we had like moves, you know, legs and shoulders and like like this. Yeah, break dance moves, doing, like and waves. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and some of these moves are actually in the movement when he XX. <laughs> we even had like a one of our members who like the he joined movement when he XX, and then he would use the same moves moves in in a club or in like a festival or something. Is like this, this the guy who used them in the raves? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. yeah. many many of them are good for that. Of course, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can use cartwheels and. Like what, some of the breakdance moves. And the spins. and Spins, yeah. The wind even wheels. some animal movements if you're crazy <laughs> enough. <laughs> For sure. Anything goes. In my yeah, yeah. Actually in a rave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, this was, uh, and, and you know, the caffeine and the alcohol also, I think even that, it takes away from the, from this, like a self-control. You don't even really know this uh, if you're properly full or not. And uh, if you if you have a lot of caffeine, maybe at some point you get like, this binge is easier. So there was a lot of like th- this type of lifestyle things that were not optimal, you know, that changed over the year a lot. So yeah, so basically the big change happened in the 2017 in Malaysia. But after that, we moved to Australia 2018. Mm. And I think we still had bad maybe eating habits. Yeah, it continued like, to. Like Australia had some amazing food, mm. like not just fresh food, but also like amazing hamburgers like yeah. one of the, some of the best ones <laughs> we have gotten <laughs> but yeah but but even today like food has been like like one of the hardest things for me because because i have the evening samuli problem like sometimes in the evening like your willpower it just disappears and sometimes it's like 10 p.m or 11 p.m and mm. you just snack something and then it's not actually a good thing at all even when you're hungry you should be like a fasting instead so that's one thing i've been battling a, a lot against and been trying to control and it's because i now i stop eating after 7 or 6 p.m 
So now it's under control because I've just decided to take control. Mm. But yeah, but the food, oh, actually all of my life has been quite, quite a challenge. Because like in some previous podcast, I said that when I was young, like maybe 10 years ago, I realized that it's fun to eat. So <laughs> I just ate a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. But for, for me, the food, you know, although, yeah, I've never suffered from like, you know, gaining too much weight. It's, for me, it's more, more like I lose quite quickly. And for the, the issue was that I felt, you know, at some point, you know, I need to be uh, maintain a lot of size, a lot of bulk. And that, that is one of the reasons also why I was eating a lot. But the thing is that even though I didn't become fat, I started to become more like like sick and I started to feel bad. My digestion was bad. Like there was there was symptoms other than, you know, you can suffer from food, food without getting like fat. There's a lot of things, you know, inflammation, uh, even just your energy levels, your fatigue and all of these effects. So that, that was for me like just w w the kind of big motivation why I started to eat in a much more like a moderate manner. I just realized that, you know, my body, maybe when it was younger, it, it was able to like handle that. But at least more with more age, it was like, you know, you get a be more sensible, gotta be more moderate, gotta can't just like keep stuffing yourself. Even though I could get away with it, like I said, you know, I could still keep my six pack, but the, it, it wasn't the only thing that, you know, uh, that is motivating, just staying even lean. Yeah, actually, I started to get rid of caffeine because of the health problems as well. Mm. Because, because at some point when I started, when I had like a, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, I just got it, started to get tired. And I was like, what, what is happening? And sometimes I would get so tired that I had to take a nap. So maybe it was something with my adrenaline, yeah. like adrenaline fatigue or cortisol levels or something like this. So because of this, I started to studying the effects and the benefits and the side effects of caffeine. So I started to actually learn that it's not all these like only positive sides and only good sides. Mm. It actually, ha actually has tons of like hundreds of negative effects as, uh, effect, uh, effects as well. So because of that, I started to get rid of and I started to feel just better and better and my anxiety and stress levels just dramatically dropped after that. Mm, yeah, it's funny that, though, like even after Australia, I was thinking, well, we, we moved to, so we, we were in the, like I said, we were in Croatia in the beginning and somebody already mentioned we were in Malaysia where this bigger changes start to happen. Like that's where we stopped or everything. We moved to Australia. Like this was the year, the first year after we'd stopped you know, consuming the alcohol and, and coffee and all the porn stuff, but there was still the overeating. But I think, you know, after that, like just moving to Finland and slowly getting the better idea of, of your own body. And, and also w one thing that you start to do, which was, I think, remarkable in Australia was this vegan fast. And we started to do the vegan days as well. Like, like even just uh, limiting meat intake to an extent, which I thought at some point, you know, especially with the carnivore, kind of hype now you know it's just like oh meat, meat is always like good uh, yeah can, and actually i don't never... think it's good at all like actually everything is good but you it's not good if you do it all the time every mm -hmm. day in like excessive amounts and i think carnivore is it's a good strategy for certain benefits it's yeah. good for certain even like health benefits and just giving you like a different stimulus and different nutrition to your body but in the long run i think it will cause because because it's not because of because of the carnivore diet. It's because of everything. Like, if you simplify too much and you focus on it solely, just on that one thing forever, then it will create problems as well. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. If you eat just bananas, then yeah. it will cause problems in the, in the long run. Yeah, and of course, that there's a huge benefit to just going carnivore because you simply dropped out so much bad stuff, but. You could, you know, eat other food items as well, as long as you just avoid it. You know, all the all this, I say, you know, maybe crap or highly processed foods, such as this. But like, I think that's one of the major benefits of going carnivore. You just take away all the like, really like the processed things, chips and so on. Like that 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 necessarily are not even bad in smaller amounts. But if you have an issue with food, you know, then you need to try to do like something like this, a very like extreme manners, like complete elimination. Yeah, and actually a lot of people get e like the exact same benefits from starting like raw vegan diet, <laughs> like exactly the same. 
like they, they lose weight, their health improves across mm. the board, like they get exactly the same benefits. It's just highly restricted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it, yeah, it's like it, restrictive dieting. Yeah. And, <laughs> and what we actually believe is that like, like all of these are just different strategi- strategies mm. and you should be like a switching from one way to another. And that's yeah. why like fasting is very important. And you can, you can sometimes have like more this like a just very standard diet as well, like in a, in a good way standard, like it's, it has a bit of everything. Yeah, 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 and pr- precisely. And I mean, I, I enjoy meat, I want to eat meat, but oh man, does it feel good after a certain in a while, like just keep like week or two vegan or even vegetarian. And after that, it's like, it tastes a lot better. I feel my body is much better. And doesn't make sense why would this even happen but it it makes good for the body to get break from almost anything and same even including the the like ve- vegetables you know like sometimes you need a break even from them i'd say like there isn't any food item that you need to constantly consume every single day like this is one of the bi- big uh, i think realize one of the biggest realizations also because i say that we've been overeating and it was you know, difficult to control that, but it was it was really overconsumption of everything. It was like even the supplements and whatever. Like this was also in our past. We we were very similar to many other people who are out there in in these regards, like trying and testing and utilizing this creatine and 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 the reason why we were the same is because we had the same information as yeah. everyone else. We were watching the same podcasts. We were studying the same information. We mm. were in part of the community, but. After, especially after the 2017, we we somehow detached from everyone else, yeah. and we started having like more alternative sources of information and more like the information from our own our own bodies. Yeah, I think it was also this journey to a more. Well, I don't know if the natural is a good term, but but in certain ways, like this uh, elimination. Yeah, elimination of of the substances and starting to really trust the body's like natural energy systems. You know, we even started to study the Qigong and all this and we realized like, you know, you can affect the, the, the hormones, you, you can affect the neurotransmitters, you can affect your mood and awakeness and all this. You can you can affect without the substances. We start to like realize that there's so much more inherent power in the body. And when you're utilizing too much substance, you're always like muddying and it's muddy in the water. You're always like in this kind of fog. And you will never encounter the, the powers that you have in your body if you constantly numb yourself with any kind of substance or drugs, actually. Yeah, actually what matters with the body is the sensitivity. Mm. Like you actually, the body can get the same benefits and the same, uh, how do I say, st- stimulus from almost anything. But it, what I mean that if you, let's say, you use drugs, you use drink lots of coffee, the stimulus you get from these things is so strong that the certain neurotransmitters are like at the maximum levels. Le- levels. So the small things you experience in your environment, you don't even feel, mm. you don't even notice. But once you get rid of these strong stimulants and the strong, like, uh, the strong stimulus, then suddenly all these small things start to produce the same levels of dopamine and the same levels of serotonin you yeah. got from these strong external sources. So let's say when I wake up, I go, I go bath in, in the sunlight. I just get so much energy and so much like dopamine just from sunlight. Mm-hmm. And then I, I see some animal, I get some oxytocin from the mm-hmm. little cat. And then, right. <laughs> and then, yeah, then suddenly like, like th- actually that's how humans were designed. We were designed to get the dopamine and serotonin from our external environment and not from the substances we are eating. Yeah, that's a big thing. You know, it's use it like the sensitivity and it, what, what exactly happens when you are, you're overstimulating yourself with the substances. It's always like an overstimulation and for a period of time, it feels amazing. It feels better than the natural stuff, but you know, there becomes a roof and there's what happens is the crash, the desensitization, de- 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 I guess that's a word. De- yes. Yeah, then you feel nothing, you become yeah. numb. Yeah, and then you need, need the 
detox. The substance is just to feel normal, just to feel like normal. Yeah, and the detox is <laughs> what, you, what you have to eventually do through like fasting. Yeah, and through avoiding. And exactly like we had this, like m- a lot of people have these same problems. Like we had this exactly the same problems as well, like overstimulation and hyper optimization as well. Like the hyper optimization is one of the worst things yeah. you can do for yourself. Like you just, because I used to drink green tea like five cups per day because I was thinking, okay, it increases your growth hormone, blah, blah, blah. So I was just drinking green tea and taking these supplements. And it's horrible for you because because optimization is different from hyper optimization. And what I see is that if you take something every day, trying to optimize everything, then you are most likely hyper optimizing, and that becomes a problem. That's because an in- interesting yeah. term. I'm, but but it's a good term, like hyper optimization. It yes. actually works for this. <laughs> and that's what most people are doing with the supplements, with the uh, stimulants, with everything. Yeah, that's a. And we are, and actually, most people are like the overstimulated with the social media, with mm. the adult entertainment, with the stimulants they consume like you if you want to feel get the natural body then you just have to return to the natural state and you cannot do it with these things yeah yeah and people wonder you know why there's so much this anxiety and you know even in the, even depression and, and when you look at the reality like you said like it, the vast majority of people are inc- incredibly overstimulated and nowadays it starts from such a young age you know with i just well, I don't have kids yet, so I, you know, it's it's difficult to to really talk about so much. But really, when you see the parents and they just give to very young ki- kids like the the screen, and they just like stare it, even in like it doesn't matter where you are, you know, you calm you calm the kids with it. You give them the restaurant so they behave better. I, I don't know. And it's it, a drug. It, yeah, it's a drug. It's it is it is actually. And I've met some women who say even say that if they had a child. And it was crying on a plane. They would give an actual truck as well. Wow! <laughs> to just make the kid quiet. Yeah. quiet. yeah I mean, I, I appreciate it. I, there's nothing more annoying than being in the plane. And yeah, yeah. But it, like, still, I would but, but never, no, never, never, never. It's like you are forcing it. Like a. <laughs> no, no. That was my point. Like it's, it's like it's the same it, as you would hit the kid. Like <laughs> shut up. S- some things you just need to to you know bear. Endure, like yeah. endure, endure and bear. Like this is this is how I think the life is. You know, you can't. Like that's the issue. I think that's the that's the biggest issue. You you want to not bear things. You want to ease everything. You know, even the like smallest sufferings, you start to like numb everything and it goes to, you know, bigger and bigger. I think the the big part for me even in this growing and, and living has been just to accept like Difficulties, accept a lot of difficulties, accept imperfections, accept struggles, internal uh, struggles, external struggles. And accept that you are not feeling good yeah, all the time. Yeah, even like, that. It's okay to feel hunger and <laughs> yeah. it's okay to be hungry and yeah. it's okay to be anxious and it's okay to be like this because when you feel it and when you endure it, then it disappears. It passes. Yeah, it, it passes. At but at the, at the moment you are like, I, I, I have to get it, I have to get it, I have to get it. Yeah. But that's what you learn when you get rid of addictions that... If you just endure it with maybe no matter how, with the help of the God or something <laughs> yeah, like this, Lord. then then it goes away. Just yeah. endure it, and the devil disappears. <laughs> yep, yep, that that's that's true. And you can you know finding other meaningful things in your life. That's a huge huge things as well. You know whatever it can be sports, can be training. I think you know training has been a huge huge part of why. You know, we've been able to survive a lot of things as well because it's like you know you can you can spend energy on it, you can kind of uh, clear your mind with it, but you also because your your blood is flowing better, your lymphs flow better, you know this le- your your brain works better. It leads to better decisions in in general, like putting your time into sports. But you can find all sorts of hobbies. I mean, I really wish that people were more, I guess proactive in trying to find something they're really passionate about you know or maybe everyone has some kind of passion but not just like you know i'm not against like w- watching movies or series but but like trying to find also something else where you're not consuming something where you're creating i really believe that every person has an ability to create something it can be like literal like art or drawing but it can yeah. be building something 
hobby, you know. Like yeah, all all cooking. of this artificial stimulus you can replace with the real thing. Like if you mm. watch pornography, then find like a actual person. Yeah, to yeah. do the same thing with. So, <laughs> yeah. And the same, with, same maybe in every case, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the same with if you <laughs> like action movies or something like this. Of course, sometimes it's good, mm. but go to the gun range and shoot some guns. Mm. Or if you're very adventurous, you like travel, like watching some travel documentaries, go travel. And the same, yeah, replace all sense. of these artificial stimulus with like real stimulus. Like if you are all the time on social media talking to people, go have some actual meetings. Yeah. And Yeah, see, see, that's the thing is that I think we all have this, uh, what is the word, like... Um, what is the word for you know empty space like vac is it vacuum yeah vacuum yeah kind of like this vacuum this em this emptiness that is there and you know w what we do is we we feel it we like and it's normal you know you have an empty moment you want to do something but the the issue is with what you are feeling it like you're feeling it with this with this I don't know meaningless entertainment and gossip and the pornography and the substances. So you 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 make yourself really full. Like sometimes in literally like filling yourself with food, right? You're like literally like uh, sw swelling. You're getting so much stuff from anywhere, all, everywhere. All the stimulants, all the stimulation and and the food and the nutrition, and you never really give this. Uh, the space to be created but if you get rid of the stuff there's going to be you know this kind of like the, the vacuum will be created in there that's this is how i experience sometimes even when like doing fasting like complete fasting there becomes this sort of a space where some new things can come into even new ideas new creativity maybe like yeah a space which we you will fill with something else but like you said you know you find something some activities and you try them you know but because you get maybe a little bit bored and you cannot feel it with the artificial stuff. So you need to go into the world to try to find find uh, something to do with your life. Yeah, exactly. Like the artificial stimulus, whether it's drugs or whether it's the, uh, what you get from the phone or mm. like the laptop or online world, it's like it replaces the actual thing. Like if you get rid of a lot of that, then you will have to get this, like the the... You have like the natural urges and demands in your body that you have to get the dopamine. You have to yeah. get the serotonin, serotonin. You have to get the GABA and oxytocin, like in one way or another. And if you get rid of the artificial stuff, then suddenly you don't like you don't even need willpower. Yeah, because the the yeah. body naturally starts moving towards these directions. Like like video games have replaced the the natural achievement and accomplish, accomplishment for many people. So they don't achieve anything in their lives mm. because they get the like the all the feeling of accompl acc accomplishment mm. from the video game and if you get rid of the video game suddenly your body demands it so somewhere else and, and you have the power to direct it where you want i never thought about it that way you know video games like uh, <laughs> like yeah like and if you go yeah. let's say if you go collect some let's say or pick some fruits or pick some mushrooms in the forest. Yeah. Every time you see mushroom, you're like, yeah, I got mushroom. <laughs> or you go fishing and you get fish and you're like, yeah, mm. I got fish because it's dopamine. But if you get the same effect from the video game, then suddenly mm. you, you you don't get anything real. You get only the, the point in a video game. Whereas in the real world, you would have real food. Yeah. And the same way in the real world, you would have like a, real results in your business, in your career, in your relationships, if you just got rid of this artificial stuff. Oh yeah, like the, it's, it's the same exact probably stimulus, same dopamine response. Like if you- Yeah, the same pathway. If you get like points in the game, that's that's so funny. Like, <laughs> and and it's also like, yeah, highly ad addicting. I, I've, I didn't even think about video games, but that is also one really big addiction people uh, at least with some yeah, one people. of the strongest one of the strongest yeah and and yeah incredible because you know that is something where people spent their entire nights sometimes as both like just like playing and and, and nowadays because sleep. when we were young it was like if you played video games it was for the young people yeah and for kids but nowadays video games it's like you're 40 years old and it's still normal 
Yeah, and the video uh, games follow you to your, you know, the, the wherever phone. Wherever you go. Phone. So, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's never off time anymore. And I'm actually a little bit worried about the, the new generations because they are like <laughs> overstimulated, they are over-medicated and, and like this. So, because we were in the in the generations that kind of were in the transition. We were not born to this new way of life. Mm. And and the generations before us didn't even, they kind of were lacking behind in many ways. Yeah. Which, which is actually a good thing. It's like the, the best thing, thing <laughs> <laughs> because you you, didn't, you were not born with this stuff. So it was actually a good thing because you had the, the good understanding of the real thing before the fake thing came along. But this... But these new generations, they are born into this stuff. So they don't even know what's the difference between the real and the fake. And with the artificial intelligence, virtual reality, AI, the, the line between real and fake, it, it gets even more blurred. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get really crazy. It has to, you know, the AI thing, you know, I can't even imagine where it will develop. And it's not like you know, yeah, it's everything is it's all bad or stuff. But there needs to be something how, how we like learn to live with these things because you know the the AI, the phones, the media—they're not going anywhere. But there needs to be some kind of a, I think, way to to deal with them. And yeah, I think of course. Yes, I think a lot of people nowadays when I watch on YouTube, they are going in the the opposite direction, mm. like one hundred percent, like they go off the grid. Mm and live with their own foods in their own garden and live yeah. in like very small self-built houses and like this. But we are more in the middle. As long as you have the, the, the understanding of the real thing, you can cling to the real thing and then you can flirt with the fake thing and mm-hmm. you can use the fake thing. It only becomes a massive problem and a big problem when you don't know the difference, which most people don't. And when you don't, when you are not attached to the real thing, if you stay with the real thing, then it's all, all good. Then you can u- utilize the fake thing wa- once in a while. But what, what do you mean, like a uh, fa- fake thing? Or like the elaborate? artificial stimulus and ah. artificial life and yeah, fake yeah, yeah, life. yeah, well, yeah. Like the real thing is like the actual. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> this is true. Like you know, even like we used to be like absolutist in regards to alcohol, like. Yeah, for zero, a, zero for many, alcohol. many years. Maybe you know, maybe maybe I think when we came to Dubai, we started to like have in you know, a birthdays or something like a drink, you know, occasionally, but very occasionally. And like th- this way, okay, it was fine. Like I, I didn't really know this any like, uh, uh, but but it was very important to be like on that zero tolerance, like not drink anything to show yourself you don't need this and everything because that also taught me, okay. Like if I drink one, that's enough. That's like way enough. Sometimes too much. Like one glass of wine, it's hard to even finish sometimes that. Or one beer for that matter. So like there are these, like you can have, you know, uh, these what are Ricardo, like unhealthy stuff. You can have a drink. Um, well, pornography, I would never recommend uh, to you to actually have. But Yeah, I'm but, scared. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That, that, like, like actually, no thank you. Because you know? sometimes, let's say on <laughs> X, like Twitter, like uses pros and then because it's so badly like uh, managed now so uses pros and you check some posts about someone else then you check the comments and then you see some pornography and you're like yeah you are like a, you you are shocked because oh. you, because I haven't watched any of this stuff for years so and it's then it's disgusting. suddenly in our, in, yeah it's disgusting <laughs> and it's, it's like what the, what the hell is happening even in Instagram it's it's not pornography. But there are sometimes like there's soft the, porn. Yeah. yeah, there's like a channel that I, I followed, and then they they started to give these shout outs to the like only fan girls, and I was like, when it comes, I'm like, I cover it. I I don't want to see. I don't want to see it. I really like. I cover, <laughs> yeah, I cover yeah. it, and I like refresh, 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 because like no, thank you. I don't want to get any of that stimulus into my life. Like it's like it's just it's just not a good road, and it's like a, it's abusing people. And it abuses like men. That, that's why I, I mean it abuses oh, yeah. the woman as well. But the yeah, it's people self, who 
depreciating. Yes, yeah, no, not depreciating. What dero? What, what is the word? Derogating. Like, I don't know. Uh, like uh, lowering yourself. Yeah. Worth, I would say. But yeah, but it's not actually good for anyone. Like no, this pornography or only fans. It's not good for ne- neither of the parties. Yeah. Like but the, yeah, yeah. The yeah. point. My point was like yeah. But, but it's some, the it's the worst for the men. Like it's it, yep. it's it kills you. Yeah, and and you know, pornography. Like you're supporting kind of the whole industry when you're watching like even like just normal like basic. Yeah, but, you and know, it's, it's one just, of the dirtiest yeah, industries. But it goes so like so to such nasty things, you know. And even the the child pornography and all this. Like I just saw like a post where. In in German, they had like lowered the the punishments for like for withholding child pornography. I was like, what what is going on? You yeah, know? that's crazy, that's insane. I just can't can't believe this stuff. But but yeah, the, what I was explaining before, okay, you know, if I have a drink here or there, or or even if you have maybe like yeah, even if you have like a coffee maybe here or there, but you, like you need to stay in control and you need to know. You need to recognize in yourself, like, can you have it? Because sometimes the one drink will destroy you. Like, if you have been a serious alcoholic, you cannot, you can, you cannot have any. Probably, if, like, ever. for the rest of your life, ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's the problem. If you go over the board, or if you go too much into any addiction, then you lose it forever. Yeah. Yeah. That. And the that's same, it. even, even some, you know, sex addicts, mm. they have to become celibate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely. Yeah, they, because <laughs> once they start, then it's, it's they're all into the... Because, they, because they, the brain, like the neurotransmitters and the pathways and everything else in the brain, it changes. Mm. So if you have been addicted for something for a long time, like, and you get rid of it, they, it's like a little bit like they, they disappear in the brain. But once you re- reintroduce the substance, then they are, it's like the same as before. Yeah. So they suddenly become alive again. Wow. Yeah, and that's the that's the problem. That's why the alcoholics they if they stop they can never have even one drink. And the same with even if you become like a super like a caffeine addict, it might be that you can never have even yeah. one cup again. Yep. That's that's a funny thing because in in some occasions like yeah if if you were not maybe super addicted to uh, these things then you might even like like i said uh, sometimes you don't even like i used to drink coffee like it was the most delicious thing in the world and i tasted a little bit like now i'm like uh, like uh, like uh, what is this you know <laughs> like yeah. it's sort of like i remember there's this like a there's a saying that um it was like what was it you you don't eat what you like but you like what you eat so the more you eat something, the more you consume something, the more you start to like it. So it's kind of like this cultivated taste. And in some cases, you know, it's fine. Maybe you start to like get or or like uh, interested into some cheeses or whatever. It's not necessarily harmful. But for example, in the cheese, I would a lot of the cheeses I don't I wouldn't like. But if I would eat more, I get used to it. I start to enjoy eating them. But it's it's not. I didn't eat them because I like them. I start to like these things because I eat more of them. So th- this applies sometimes to life. So you need to think about you know, are you consuming something because you like it, or are you just liking it because you're consuming it so much? Yeah, so, because especially like young kids, they don't like coffee at all. Yeah, yeah. And the same with alcohol. It's like whiskey. Like yeah. it's disgusting. <laughs> it's like a poison. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. A, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it burns you, <laughs> burns your throat. But we have spoken uh, in the past. We have spoken a lot about like the intuitive eating and following mm. following your intuition, and it has massive benefits. And it's very good to like be in tune with your body and having intuition about everything. But it's not the the perfect system. You mm. also have to have like a intelligent boundaries which you apply to your life yeah. and your behavior. Because if you only follow the intuition, it's very easily manipulated as well. It's right maybe 75% of the time, but mm. 25% of the time, depending on your like the external stimulus, it can be manipulated quite easily. So yeah. you have to have external control and boundaries as well. Yeah. So that's, why, that's kind of like a, 
the enlightened way to, to do things because lo- a lot of people they only apply external boundaries and standards like they only apply i eat this at this time and they only eat the exact same food and the same amount and these exact supplements and they don't listen to the body at all and it's the recipe for disaster as well but and some people only follow follow the intuition they have no boundaries at all and these people are very easily manipulated in every aspect of life actually but once you combine these two things like the right and the left and the hard and the soft and the intuition with the external knowledge then it's like the enlightened and the perfect state oh, which yeah. we have been doing for many many years now mm. that's that's so well said like intuition plus intelligence because i i was like i am i suppose an intuitive person and for me that's like very natural to to just try to listen to my body right and that this is what i did and it worked like well in the beginning but like i need structure and i need that intelligence as well because i know that you know i can like you said you know you can trust your your intuition uh, to an extent but things can go really easily out of hands like you you don't even know because you don't know when your intuition changes to an addiction so that's a, that's the thing because if you're addicted your intuition is like all confused <laughs> it's i don't know like i mean you can't you shouldn't even call an addiction as intuition but you probably mistake it for intuition because and then then you don't and, really know and many like nowadays there because many people are spiritual mm. they even mistake the intuition for God. Ah, so yeah. they think, yeah, I'm not, I don't believe in Islam or Christianity, but I believe in, I'm spiritual and I believe in God. But for <laughs> them, the spirituality is actually intuition and the intuition is easily manipulated. What is intuition actually even? Just a gut feeling? In gut feeling and the ability to listen to your, like the yeah, listen to internal uh, responses and demands of the body. Yeah, it is. It is some form of intelligence. I, I yeah, it is like body intelligence. Yeah, but it's not, but it's not like a. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like you know, if we if if we live in like an ideal world, you know, then intuition would tell you everything. Like yeah, exactly. Uh, I suppose like you know the, the the your intuition should get better over time. But but the thing about it is that these these intelligent uh, borders, like I think you you mentioned, like setting borders for boundaries. example, b- boundaries. Like, like for example, having a certain like veg like vegan day maybe once or twice a week, which we did at some point. Like it was very important because that changed my intuition. Like I now I start to realize before that I didn't even I thought that I need meat every day. It now it seems the most ridiculous thing ever, the most ridiculous ridiculous idea. But I lived at some point that thinking just like by default that oh, I, I need to eat meat every day. I just need to eat it. Why? I don't know, but I needed to. <laughs> and once, once I, you know, kept this break and I, you know, did even co- completely, you know, fast, water fast, dry fast, and even this some longer periods without meat, and I was like, wow, okay, this is good. Like, and my bo- body felt better. Like, so, so that sort of border and experimentation, which wasn't intuitive, it became my in- part of my intu- intuition. Like now, my body tells me sometimes. Don't eat meat so much, but they didn't do that before. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like the intuition can develop greatly. Mm. Like yeah, especially when you like because nowadays I have a really strong sense of right and wrong, mm. so it's very easy to stay on the right path with most things. Yeah, yeah, and even like regards to just the, the eating the correct amount, you know, um, if, when you, when you start to re- reduce things then you start to get again more sensitive your intuition gets better but it intuition the body intuition it re- does require this kind of a detox to really get refined you know or, or to get on a better level because that's the thing like when once you really uh, are not mixing or stirring the the pot with yeah yeah anything, when you're like the hyper optimize optimized yeah then like your intuition the level of intuition is actually very mm. low. So you're yeah, overstimulated and you are doing like hyper optimization then. Yeah. Yeah. And based on what? It's again it's based on writings usually. It's based on some studies and some like actually ego. marketing. It's based yeah, on it's based on marketing and ego. Yeah. And just yeah. thinking you you have you know what's the best yep. in your head. And then you try to achieve some sort of result yeah. which you don't actually have even control over. 
Yeah, and I don't like, again, you know, like we went through some of that and some of that, you know, people call it like biohacking stuff as well. And it's not like that's also, you know, completely wrong or something. I'm, I'm sure, you know, some people can find also benefits. And the ultimate thing is that you learn. Like there are so many things that I've, I've experimented with during my life, all these like gluten-free diets as well and and, and, and fastings and the vegan stuff and, and like car, carnivore even a little to, to an extent, like, and the biohacking and the, it's like it's all, all learning in a way. But then how do you, you know, how do you, kind of a change your path i guess that's that's the different thing because it's so easy to get stuck on on the on that what is the track <laughs> and you need knowledge and you need information yeah. and, you, and most people need guidance as well because yeah. like even i had to read so many things about addiction and all these things mm. to actually understand what's happening like yep. it, it didn't like i didn't just realize everything like okay now i know but i had to actually study mm, and understand that's a good point and it's actually something we are planning to like share with others as well, like have the, like the basic fundamentals of everything. Yep, yep, all, all this stuff. And but that's a that's actually a great thing because there are so many people who are you know sharing their experiences with the addictions and all that. So it's like a that's again one of the good things about this all this technology and the internet. You know, you just you can find so much like. Uh, peers support and these experiences and different perspectives that can really open up your world because a lot of this stuff like i said it's it can be very difficult to to make a change like if you're go if you've been doing the same thing for five years ten years how do you make a change in that point you know it's it's not so easy so if you have someone who like kind of motivates and inspires and give you a new idea maybe you're like oh there it is, like light bulb. You know, I'm going to try this. And we also want to provide the community yeah. and the support to Precisely. other people as well, because we have been, we have gone through a lot and it wasn't easy for us. And we, we had to really endure for many, 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 many years yeah. to actually reach the point we are now. Yeah. And because of these years, we have lots of knowledge and lo lots of oh, wisdom yeah. and lots of understanding how things actually work. Oh, yeah. So let's... Finish. All right, we can finish here. Stay strong. <laughs>